Hey guys, welcome back to The Kinwoven Home. I'm Shara, and today I'm still pregnant. Actually, I'm technically not pregnant anymore in real life. Um, I just filmed this before I had the baby so I could take some maternity leave and still have some good videos for you guys. Today's video is seven reasons that your house could be looking a little cheap. Rundown, outdated, not really in its best form. I'm gonna give you some tips on also how to improve your spaces and fix some of those mistakes or some of those issues that you may be facing in your home to get your house looking a beat and beautiful and with the times, you know? Question of the video is what in your home did you maybe splurge on? What is it, what's worth it to you to actually splurge on a piece of furniture maybe? Is it a rug? Is it a light fixture? Like what category of things in your home do you classify Hmm, that is worth it. Something that I tend to spend money on is actually light fixtures. They are expensive, and if it's the right fixture that goes with what I'm looking for, I'll drop some serious cash because I think lighting is like the jewelry of the room. Let's jump into today's video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, thumbs up this video, and let's get started. First things first, this is an obvious one, but something that's causing your house to look cheap is that it's messy and cluttered. There is really no way around it. You need to clean up your space and you need to declutter your space. Obviously cleaning up, like having a clean home helps your space not look cheap and messy, but the bigger tip here is to declutter. Sometimes we just gather a lot of knickknacks or a lot of things, and when you have too much if you've over accessorized a surface, it can tend to look cheap, it can tend to look overwhelming. And instead of having a few key pieces that really stand out and make a great impact, you just have a big old mess. When you have surfaces that you're accessorizing, stand back and make sure you edit that surface. You wanna look at a bookcase, you wanna look at a side table, you wanna look at your countertops. Take away the things that you don't have to have on your countertop in your kitchen. Can you take some of those cooking oils and put them in a cabinet somewhere that's not on the counter? Or can you put your air fryer in a cabinet somewhere else or in a different closet or something. So it's not always right there in front of you that you see it all the time. You wanna simplify, you wanna declutter, and you wanna clean up your spaces. That tip alone is going to make a world of difference in your home. Reason number two that your house may look cheap is if your TV is not mounted on the wall. Now I know if you're renting, sometimes you think you can't mount your TV, but I'm telling you, I have mounted my TV in almost every place that we have lived. And if you just do a little YouTube search, as my father-in-law calls it, go to YouTube University. You can teach yourself how to patch the wall if it's a bigger hole and cover up the drywall and then you just, if it's white, you just quickly paint it white and you're good to go. But the impact that it makes when you hang a TV on the wall elevates your space immediately. You get that plastic stand out of there, especially if you wanna invest in a frame TV. Getting a frame TV on the wall makes your space look just so much more elevated and it also looks like art if you have the frame TV because you can put a piece of art up there and have it look so magical. And I think that elevates the space so much. It makes it look stylized, intentionally decorated with like your personality and like you went the extra step. Oftentimes when you go the extra step in decorating, you can tell that you went the extra step and it looks better in the end. Reason number three that your house might look cheap is you are using the wrong rug size in your space. So this can apply to any room of the house. You want to have a rug that is big enough that it goes all the way under the front legs of your furniture. And when it comes to a living room or, or a family room area, you don't want to have the rug be just sitting kind of floating in front of your furniture. You want it to go, it could go completely underneath all the legs, that would be ideal. But as long as the front two legs are on top of the rug, at least six or eight inches, you are good to go, you have the right size rug. Speaking of rugs, this particular rug is one of my favorites. I've had a lot of rugs in this room, I've had a lot of rugs in my house, and I think this one really takes the cake because it has that texture um, and a little bit of movement in it with its Persian style vibe, but it has those earth tones which is really beautiful. A lot of the neutrals and the caramels and the creams and the blues and I think it just ties the living room together really well. This rug is from Article, and if you guys are interested, I will be linking this particular piece below if you guys wanna check it out. You guys know I love Article. I've always loved them. I have a ton of their furniture in our house, and as always, they ship to Canada and to the US. They have free shipping if, you, if your order is over $9.99, and they also have a flat rate ship of $49 if it doesn't meet that quota. So check them out, I will link it below, and get yourself a rug that fits. By the way, if you have a rug in your bedroom, you want that to go 
horizontally, not vertically, under your bed, and you want it to go underneath your bed at least halfway, primarily up to the front legs of your nightstands, preferably. If you can have that, you'll be good to go. And then you want it to come out on the edge, two to three feet on each side and in front of your bed which means you'll need a bigger rug. Really the biggest problem is people just get rugs that are too small. The fourth reason that your house might look cheap is you may have fluorescent kitchen lights. You need to get those bad boys out of there. I know that these do pop up in a lot of homes. It is kind of a more of a reno thing to remove them. But if you are renovating a space and you do have fluorescent lights in your space, you would be all the wiser to really invest in taking that drop down box out removing your fluorescent lights and putting some incandescent um, or even now LED can lights in your space. It will take away that, first of all, the buzzing sound that fluorescent lights can lead to. Also fluorescent lights are just not flattering. They're just weird greenish blue light that just makes you feel like you're in a hospital. So get your fluorescent lights out of there and add some can lights. Speaking of lights, number five, the fifth reason your house might look cheap is you may have those yucky boob lights all over your house. These do pop up in a kitchen, and if you're renting, they do pop up an awful lot. I actually have a boob light in my house. If you don't know what a boob light is, boob lights have shades made out of glass, and they cover the bulb that comes out of the ceiling. Most of the time, they're super inexpensive from like Home Depot or somewhere, and they have like chrome on them, or they're gold, or they have doily prints on them or whatever. They're just not cute. They look like a boob. That's why people call them boob lights. You're much better getting a different kind of light in there and taking out the boob lights, you know? The sixth reason your house might look cheap is you might have matching furniture sets all throughout your house. Sometimes matching furniture sets can work. Most of the time they do not, and here's why. They just look too matchy matchy. You can have similar wood tones, right? You can have a dresser in your room that's oak color and your bed can be oak color. That's amazing. But you don't want it to look like it all came from the same exact store. I recommend getting a bed, even if you went to a store that's like a living spaces or places that sell matching sets, get an oak bed from one set and mix it with an oak dresser from another set that ties together. Make sure that the color woods are, com are complementary to each other. One may have caning and one may have slatting and that goes together well. One might be, you know, uh, more distressed than the other, but the shade of wood matches. You could have two pieces of furniture that are dark wood and they go together well, but they don't look identical to each other. When you buy something that's a set, it just looks it looks store-bought, it doesn't look custom, it doesn't look curated, it doesn't look elevated, it just kind of looks basic. And you want it to feel like it has that little elevated sprinkle to it, then try to mix it up and make sure it's cohesive and it looks good together, but it's not the exact same set. The last and final reason that your house might look cheap or a little bit run down is you may have a serious furniture layout problem. So I think a lot of the time when the biggest like crime or sin that I see in photos that you guys send us about your spaces. Sometimes we think in a room that's big, we should push all the furniture up against the walls and backs of furniture should be up against every wall. If you're in a really small space, that might be your reality because you have a really small space. But even in my Hermosa Beach apartment, we lived in 500 square feet. We had a tiny, narrow apartment. And even in that, I pushed the sofa up so we had a walkway behind it, as opposed to putting furniture up against the walls and then it's all kind of mismatched because you have doorways, you have walkways, it complicates things. In this room, we have a long, narrow room. My sofa is up against the wall there, but I did leave some opening back here so I could put a table, I could accessorize. It gives me a space to walk back there. We have like a lot of our TV equipment and stuff back there hidden. And so I do think Putting all your furniture up against a wall doesn't look good most of the time. Bring them off the wall and make it conversational and make it look like an intentional design and you'll be in great shape. Okay, you guys, that's all we have for today. I hope you loved this video. Uh, make sure you thumbs up this video and leave your comments below. I wanna know your special splurges and things that you would be willing to spend money on. And again, anything that I talked about in the video, I'll be sure to link below for you guys. If you haven't, if you have, if one of the rooms you're considering that you think looks cheap or doesn't look up to your standards or you just wanna fix it and you don't know how, if it's your bedroom, I have really good news. We did just launch a brand new course called Weekend Warrior and we design, we have 12 different bedroom designs that you guys can pick from. You pick the bedroom design you like and we teach you how to implement that design in your bedroom in exactly 48 hours. You have two days, you can comp totally complete the project, you're a weekend warrior and you will wake up 
They will go to bed on a Friday and wake up on a Sunday in a completely different room. So if your bedroom is the thing you're working on, I'm gonna link below this new course. You really wanna check it out um, because I think it's gonna be hugely helpful and transformational for you in your space. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Love to you all. Bye-bye.